Indonesian culture is one of the most colorful and vibrant in the world. It is the ultimate multicultural society. Because of its fortuitous location at the center of many of the trade routes in the ancient world, Java was visited by merchants from as far away as the Middle East and as close as the Malay Peninsula. These dealers would hunker down in the archipelago after they bought and sold their goods until the trade winds changed direction, allowing them to return home. They had lots of leisure time to share their culture's songs, dances, and religious customs. Interweaved with the indigenous customs of Java and Bali, they created a rich potpourri of traditions, many of which entered the culture permanently. Java and Bali are richly endowed in all of the arts, music, dance, painting, drama, and batik. Everywhere on both islands, a love of beauty is visible. You cannot avoid seeing the colorful batik clothing worn by both the men and the women, or hear the fluid tones of the gamelan orchestras playing in the theaters at weddings, funerals, and other celebrations or admire the extraordinary art on the walls of restaurants and hotels. The sounds of a gamelan orchestra are like no other music in the world. It is indigenous to Java and Bali. These orchestras are characterized by percussion instruments. They appear at most festivals, dances, and puppet shows, as well as religious and royal ceremonies. The music is deep, rich, resonant, and moving. In Bali, the music of the barong, a dance-like performance that features exotic costumes, is performed by a gamelan orchestra. The shows usually present a fight between a panther-like creature, the barong, who represents virtue, and the nasty demon queen called Ranga, who is evil. Gamelan orchestras also highlight the Weyang Kulit puppet shows. The word Weyang is Javanese in origin and means shadow. Kulit means skin or hide. The puppets are usually made of buffalo skin. A big wide white screen separates the audience from the puppets. A light of some sort, sometimes halogen, sometimes just a flame, Placed behind the puppets, illuminates the outlines of the puppets on the screen. A delang, or puppet master, controls the puppets, sings, and speaks for them. There are usually multiple characters, and the delang uses a different voice for each. <laughs> Oh, my son, I do not understand you very much. Why until now that you do not have any girlfriend, my son? To my father. Whenever you meet me, you always ask me about girlfriend. Please let me study, please. Oh, I know, I know. But you know, one of the most important things of the Balinese life is having generation. Oh, I know my father. If you know, why don't you get a girl, my son? Okay, okay. 
But give me a time to study. I would like to study first. And then I would like to find a good job. After having a good job, I would like to find a nice girl for my wife. Otherwise, the people will say that I am not responsible for my cup, for my partner. Oh, you have a very good plan in your life, my son. Very often, the themes and stories come from two Hindu holy books, the Mahabharata and the Ramayana. These stories are based on myths and legends, much like our fairy tales. There was a king who had a daughter, but no one would marry the princess because she was sick. So the king sent her to a lake where she could be cured. At the lake, there were some nymphs from Nirvana swimming. A monkey stole one of their pieces of clothing. The rest of the group returned to Nirvana, but she was not permitted entry because someone unholy had touched her clothes. The monkey approached her. She asked him for help in getting her clothing back. She said she would do anything he asked to get back her clothes. But a prince shows up and fights with the forces of evil who are keeping her from Nirvana. In the end, the prince overcomes the forces of evil, and he and the princess enter nirvana together. Now the shows often present the stories of these two holy books, but they also use contemporary themes as well. Hand movements are slow and graceful as the dancers pose in elegant stances. The dancers are accompanied by a gamelan orchestra. A great deal of preparation goes into these performances. It takes hours for the dancers to put on their makeup and get their costumes ready. The fine arts are well represented in Java. You can find stone sculpture as early as the 9th century at the two mammoth temples Barobudur and Prambanan. Most of these sculptures are religious. Those at Barobudur are Buddhist, while at Prambanan they are Hindu. The sculptures do not all have religious themes, however, at either temple. Many represent everyday life in the ninth century in Java. Another art form that is indigenous to Java and Bali is batik. Batik is created by using wax to cover areas of a cloth and then dyeing the cloth, usually multiple times. The wax-covered areas do not absorb the dye, while the exposed areas soak up the colors. Covering different areas with wax repeatedly and then dyeing the cloth with different colors creates breathtaking designs. They are used both as paintings and also as cloth for delightfully bright clothes.
Wherever you go in Java or Bali, you run into beauty. Whether it is a group of lovely young Muslim girls in their headscarves and dresses, or it is simply the colorful flowing gowns traditionally worn by the women, or the art displayed in all of the public buildings, along the streets, and in the schools and hotels. Beauty can also be found in the lively tones of gamelan music heard everywhere. There is beauty also in the traditional public buildings and temples. Beauty is everywhere. It represents the rich and deep ancient culture. Java and Bali are places for the soul, places that make life worth living. <laughs>